Welcome, everybody. Episode number two of the BSW podcast. With me today, of course, is Nigel Goodridge, sales. No, he's not in sales. Sorry, marketing yes. engineer. The sales guy is represented by, by this guy, Jamie week. Singer. Hey, Jamie. Oh, hey. How's it going? Yeah, nice, going. To, nice to be here. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Long walk. Even though, <laughs> even though you're financially. In, Obligated to be here. Um, Brian Seeley here, director of marketing here for BSW. Want to take a quick minute to uh, talk about our sponsors. You may have heard of them, you may not have, but I've heard of them. Electrovoice microphones heard on air by billions. Trust Electrovoice microphones, a true broadcast standard since 1927. And if you look at this damn pointing to and when he's talking into billions and billions, trillions. So. Also, Rode Microphones. Podcast like a pro and elevate your content with the Rodecaster Pro Podcast Console, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, HDV Mixer, video for radio and video for podcast. Now with activated camera switching. That's oh pretty my. cool. Yeah, oh my is right. That is a big deal. We'll get into that as well a little bit later here. I can't, I, you know, that was a tease, Nigel. And Almond Roca, good enough for the World War One Doughboys. BSW includes a legendary Almond Roca candy in every BSW order. That ships from the warehouse. Is that a little bit of uh, history there? A little bit of history. Did you not know that? I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, World War One, huh? Yeah, they used to make uh, the chocolate bars in World War One, and those those like five thousand calorie chocolate bars that taste like dirt. I know they did the. Uh, what was it? One or two that they did the uh, Tootsie Rolls. They do Tootsie Rolls. Yeah, there's a whole big thing about. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Where the uh, the guys their their vehicles were broken or something like that, and they had to use Tootsie Rolls to repair them because they would. Freeze and whatnot. Yeah, See, it, was a, it was a big thing. On, like, that, was in du- that was in WW2? I don't know if it was one or two. Uh, probably two. Because I'm a huge one. nerd, and I did not know yeah, that. I looked that up. It was pretty cool. I I'm writing it down. That that's, that's really great. Well, you know what? Uh, we, need to, we need to take a moment here to introduce, uh, uh, introduce Jamie and you know, kind of get into our... What would you say you do here? What would, what would you say you do here, Jamie, for BSW? Well, I do a lot of uh, things, but primarily I just like answer the phone and take care of emails and take care of customers and make sure they get the proper gear that they uh, need for the project. How long have you been at BSW? <laughs> How long have you said? Uh, I am creeping up on 15 years now. Uh, as of November 8th, it'll be uh, 15 years. 2004 is when I started. 2004. Yeah. And before that, it was, yay, music store stuff. Yeah. Well, that's kind of where we, we all came from whether we wanted to or not yeah that's 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 how you cut your teeth is out in wow. retail yeah definitely uh yeah well and you, you know i understand you're you're a drummer I've, I've never seen you play and that's probably more nigel's fault than my fault but um because he's my drummer so i don't i don't talk to other drummers but i've never seen him play either oh so. <laughs> well there's stuff online if you ever want to dig it up well i do and we'll, we'll we'll give you we'll give you a chance to, to plug it um is it all from 2004 uh no i think it's probably about maybe six years ago oh not bad maybe. oh that's good that's current yeah. That's correct. Well, everybody, yeah, Jamie Singer, who's a 15-year veteran BSW Thank sales you. guru. He the man. Uh, you may have seen him at some of the podcast shows. We've been He's been traveling a little bit and uh, talking with you all out there in the field. So uh, give Jamie a call. He's he's He knows his stuff. I will just say that. He knows a little bit of a little bit. Yeah. I mean, Audio Wizard seems extreme. Yeah. That's kind of, yeah, I don't know. But... Yeah. You know what? He makes things happen that probably shouldn't happen. <laughs> and look at that smile. And <laughs> even though they can't see it on the phone. Yeah, and and you know, I want to kind of take a minute to talk about kind of what we're using today and you know, in the, the first show we, you know, we were talking with the guys over at Rode Microphones and we had Rode Pod mics and that was kind of the big thing and we were talking about the Rodecaster Pro and so, sort of its inception and its design and but uh, we we decided to switch it up today and we're going to make an effort to kind of do some different things for for every show. We we'll use different mics and, and different headphones and we'll we'll try and and, and represent and get you guys some sounds that you can check out. So what what are we using today, Nigel, for microphones? Uh, today we are using all EV microphones, starting from the RE20, which Jamie is using. I am on the RE20. Yes, which is a, a very patent green, is what I like to call it. But if you get it in different years, it's different colors, I understand. Yeah, I've seen many pictures of the uh, various colors of the green one. When I spoke with a, another mic manufacturer and, and you know was talking about the RE20, I said, oh yeah, I love that gray color. I said, it has been gray in years, man. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a Sherman. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and you, what mic are you using, Nigel? Uh, I am using the RE320. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? I, underst- I understand it's it's black and not green. It's black, 
And it, it has a little bit more high end to it, I, I believe. Do you know why? Uh, why is why? that? Why? Do you know why, Jamie? It could be neodymium. Uh, it could be neodymium. I think you're correct. Correct. So the, the RE20 uses ceramic element and then neodymium in the, the RE320. There you go. And it's a l- little bit less expensive. It's a little bit sharper. Unobtainium? Un- yeah, unobtainium. That's what's no. That's what's in this mic. This, oh, is the, wow. this is the 27 ND. There you go. ND4. Neodymium. neodymium. I don't know if it's neodymium. Is it really? Yeah, it is. Okay, it just, is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it better be. I don't have to sell it. Thank God. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're using these microphones today. Uh, you know, the RE20's been around since the 60s. I want to say it was like 60, yeah, 64, 65. Yeah. Originally a kick drum mic. Kick that's drum important. mic is sounds great. Or bass guitar. Well, and that's kind of how all. Broadcast mics have started out, <laughs> whether we wanted them to or not. There's a company that I won't name that came to me and said, hey, we want to make a broadcast mic. And I said, that's awesome. I would love to hear it. What's it sound like? Sounds great. Cool. Yeah, we're going to call it a kick drum mic. Great. We'll never sell it. <laughs> and, of course, they did that. And, of course, we never sold it. And it's gone into an obscurity. Aww. Poor guys. I'm so sad about that. Well, They'll learn the error of their ways, maybe. But maybe again, they won't. But, uh, um, you know, we're also using some new cans. What were we using last time? I don't remember. We're using the well, Mackies? Well, I was using my inners, my UEs. Oh, your UE inners, yes. Uh, but you are using something very, very, very special. And I already forgot the name of them. Ooh, I know those are they're Neumanns, the Neumanns. NDH20s, I think, is what they are. But these are literally the most comfortable headphones I've ever used. They've got this sort of microfiber thing going on, and it's orange and... They're really, really light, disconnecting cable. They're, they're, I think they're more of a monitoring headphone. They kind of feel like a, a, a sort of a flat response. Mm. But I like them. You know, they're they were on my desk. What am I supposed to do? Oh, yeah. Just, you, you know, know. and then Nigel's got, Nigel's got neat ones. I'm a big fan of those headphones. Hey, what are they? They are ATH-60Xs yeah. from Audio-Technica. So that's their on-ear um, headphones. So that, that was one, actually, we, we had talked about because the BPHS-2 broadcast headset which we had a hand in sort of designing and, and telling them what not to do and to do. That's the headphone that came out of that headset. They said, we already made the headset, so let's just make a headphone. So the, the drivers, I didn't get this, you know, we, we told them not to flip it up and make it mute and stuff. You know, well, the Europeans love that. But There's people here in the States that loved it too. Really? Yeah. No, they didn't tell me that. I got that question. Yeah. Really? It's a flips up? Oh, they got yeah, a buyer. They yeah, they were looking for the headset that's flipped up. It's biodynamic. dynamic. It was a uh, Sennheiser does that. A tw- I think it was twenty six. Oh, the twenty five. Twenty five does that. I don't think the twenty six does. No, it they, I think the twenty seven may do it. Yeah, because I think no, it does. Because no, it does not. They because they asked about that too. But I think the twenty. They said, well, we'll keep it on the twenty fives. Yeah, but which is no more. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pause for a minute. Okay. <sighs> well, we'll give that moment of silence. Well, <laughs> yeah, I could I could go to the sounds, um, but so. That's more or less what we're using for the mic setup and headphone setup. Of course, we're utilizing, um, you know, the, the Rodecaster Pro. Uh, and Nigel, do you have do you have some images of kind of what our studio looks like? So we yeah. can let let the folks at home so kind of see what we're doing. This would be at home. your side. That's nice. Yeah. So it's it's not bad, right? And we're we're in our little kind of recreation room here at BSW. So I've got a, a return monitor so I can see the program output of the video. Um, and then we've also got the that's that's our board. That's the Rodecaster Pro uh, consoles. That's the hub of absolutely everything. You know, and we've—I think we did a whole show on that, so I don't need to go on it. And that is a laptop with 12 hours of long battery life, um, <laughs> <laughs> and the Rodecaster Pro uh, companion app. So, you know, they—they've they, done a quite a few updates to this board since uh, since we've last even even used it. Um, and we can kind of go into that now because I know there are tons of people using that. We were Jamie and I were at the Podcast Movement Trade Show in Orlando uh, a week or two ago, and you know, they they were talking about this big firmware update and it was going to be awesome. It was going to have all this stuff and. You know, of course, we just we were we were really happy about one thing that they did that we helped them with, which uh, which I was pretty happy about. But uh, they they did a lot of different stuff. They added a podcast transfer mode, uh, which allows you to access the micro SD uh, from the Rodecaster Pro directly from the computer. So instead of having to do everything in there and then pull the card and dump it, you can access the card and pull stuff right off of it. So that was a good one that they did. That's kind of a given one that they should have just done from the get go. But well, you know, and I you think know. you know, and at, and speaking with with Ryan. Uh, Ryan White, who was on that the last guy. show, yeah. Oh, we can't talk about that. <laughs> oh boy, we can't talk about that. That's what's, it's Orlando. It must stay in Orlando. Um, he 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 was very adamant in that that this was not designed for the the professional use. This was this was the mom and dad 
starting their podcast and they wanted to make it accessible for everybody. Oh. And just the, the, the feature set, they, they, they weren't expecting uh, this box to really uh, kind of do what it's doing currently. But luckily, since it's all firmware updatable, they can they can make these changes. And, you know, we appreciate, you know, you customers coming to us and telling us, no, this is wrong or this would make life easier. And, you know, um, we're, we've got a we're a direct conduit right to those guys. And, and so there's a few things you guys have brought up that have really helped. Yeah, it's very cool. So and when recording now, there's a pause indicator to the left of the timer. As you can tell, I'm not reading this. I have it memorized. Huh. Uh, the timer now flashes blue when you add a marker. Boring. But it's totally cool. The big thing was, too, they added, you know, so they have eight sound pads. You going show the picture there, Nigel? Mm-hmm. So they know what the sound pads? Nope. Nope. Sorry. Nope. We'll get to you. Sorry. Nope. Sorry. Nope. Sorry. Nope. Sorry. nope. There, there it is. There it is. Wow. So, okay. So you've got the eight sound pads. Great. Um, that's all you had. You could do eight things. And it's, that's great if you've got a couple things. And we, we may do on the, the first show with that. But now you've got uh, up to eight banks of eight. So that was a big, 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 big thing. So, you know, now, I mean, I can play all sorts of different sounds and music, you know, and of course, you know, Jamie's little, you know. Oh, my. You know, we're gonna make <laughs> oh sure, that's, my. I know that's your favorite. Um, so you can set up your shows based by page, based by category, sound, bed, music, however, however you want to do it. Um, they've also reorganized the settings menu, and it made it a little easier. Um, a lot of audio screen settings, monitor outputs, uh, pre-fade listen is a big one. But still, my favorite is uh, the, the one that we asked for way back in April, which was being able to talk down your three media channels, the USB, the TRS, and the Bluetooth. If you're the, the host, you should be able to talk down those channels and communicate on the other end without being on air. And uh, I spoke with the guys at Rode, and you know they they basically made that sound. You know, and you know, look, when a puppy hears a new sound, they go, because we could do that. And I said, great, let's do it. So, I mean, the Michael Miles, Miles yeah. head turn. <laughs> yeah, the head turn. And, and <laughs> it was great because it's it allows our customers now, especially the guys doing remote broadcasting, uh, to talk down their audio codec back to the station or communicate on a phone call back to their station to let them know they're going live uh, while keeping the show going. So, um, if you check out the remote to go Roadcaster Pro packages on the website, we've got a custom breakout cable for you radio people and you can use it. It's super secret. Uh. <laughs> And, well, oh crap! I did that. So that's 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 kind of the, the breakdown. Um, you know, let's let's take a look at Nigel's side because I, I run the console and, and I do the Skypey thing. And but Nigel's Nigel's got the hard job. Yeah, this is my side right here. I run whatever you're seeing, as you can see. <laughs> How the heck are we doing that, Nigel? <laughs> well, we are using HDB Mixer, which is uh, a a solution that we sell here at BSW. It uh, and actually, I can even show you the UI here. That's the GUI right there, uh-huh. the UI. A lot uh-huh. of stuff going on here. Um, it works very, very well, as you can see. As you can see, I keep seeing these saying these puns. You know, it's okay. It's okay. And whatnot. You're punning. Um, yeah, I mean it's, and we have it integrated with the Rocaster Pro, of course. So, uh, you know, yeah. it's all just it kind of flows nice and seamlessly, audio-wise and everything, right into the computer. Yeah. Uh, well, we also have the. Uh, we are also using these little cameras. Ooh. These are the Logitech uh, cameras that come with the package. Uh, I believe it's the um, smaller package that these come with. Correct. Mm, yes. Yeah, so this is the this is for the the podcasters because there's there's a couple versions of HDV mixer. Uh, there's you know we originally designed we was in, not me but um, Insoft is the the company we partner with. They designed this for radio stations primarily, but we've we've gotten them to make a light version for podcasters so because most podcasters don't need six cameras 22 simultaneous outputs i mean that just it doesn't it, it's just too much it'd be fun but it's too much so then the 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 version that that we're selling uh, is hdb light which is three cameras and three total outputs so you can do the three camera shoot like we're doing yeah oh you go ahead the cameras don't come with that the HDB light. That's just, That's the, just software. the software. Yeah. But it the, comes with the, the small package. Thing. There you go. Has it all. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we we also got um, uh, Insoft to uh, interface um, Rodecaster Pro with HDB Mixer Light. Uh, so now um, you can do um, automatic camera switching by the audio. So whoever talks, you can set a parameter that makes the camera automatically switch. We can simulate it here. We're not running it today, but see, I'm talking and it's going to switch, and now Nigel's going to talk and it's going to go to him. Yeah. And then Jamie's going to talk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No See? Problem. Just like that. Magic. So we basically have replaced Nigel. Um, so th- so if we do this, Nigel, you're, you're fired. Won't be the first time. Well, really? 
No, I've actually never been fired from a job. Really? Surprisingly, not the wood. <laughs> I wish I could say the same. Jamie? Uh, yeah, I've been let go. I've been fired one time. <laughs> and it wasn't really fired. It was like a, how come I'm not on the schedule? Oh, it was one of those. Yeah. Yeah, I came into one to work one time. And they're like, what are you doing here? I'm yeah. like, I'm starting the thing. And they're like, N- didn't anybody tell you? Um, yeah, that was nice. What would you say you do Yeah, here? that's the problem. Uh, I, yeah. I work here... Sir, ma'am, can I? No, go home. No, yeah. No. Well, good for you, Nigel. That's 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 one more thing. I'm writing that down. We aim the police. Nigel's never been fired. Um, so, yeah, wrote, uh, HDV Mixer is kind of the hub of everything we're doing video-wise here. And, uh, you know, it's 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 a great way to add video to your podcast. Like you can see here in the, the top right portion, that's your program output. The bottom left is the, the button box. So you can program all your pre-shots there if you like. Um, a lot of your, uh, your media hub there is in the middle if you want to start calling out uh, YouTube pages or Skype, which we'll be doing later with a very special guest. Uh-huh. Um, as well, so I mean, it's completely customizable. That's the other thing. You you get HDV mixer, and you buy it from BSW. It's not here's the software. Good luck to you. Um, an HDV engineer uh, from Insoft will get on uh, Team Viewer. They will set up your entire channel. They will help you with everything. They'll get you set up. It's it's not. It, 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 we make it easier. You know. Yeah. The, the cool thing with that that um, Alex was telling me like they. They get everything done for you. Your your logos, your 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 PNG files, your RSS feeds, everything. They they make sure that you're totally 100% set up before they just let you go, and they make sure that you're comfortable with with working it. Correct. And yeah. that's then that's amazing. Well, and we've we've been playing with it since its inception, and we've called Alex twice today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it, it you know which which will which will kind of bring us uh, you know uh, to our to our next segment, which uh, we'll lovingly call "What Went Wrong." Mm. Because inevitably in audio, podcasting, and you know, there's always things that end up going wrong. And we had a doozy. Yeah. A doozy. It took uh, a lot of our time up today. Yeah. And so <laughs> we ran our first show. And, uh, you, you know, of course, we our setup is a little bit different than a typical podcast studio because we're interfacing Skype video and running... Uh, audio through the Rodecaster Pro board to get the, uh, the the mix minus going, and we're networking video to the other computer through our switch, and so it's a little more complicated. But we did have, and if you'll go back and listen to the first podcast, you'll hear some noise. Ooh. Do you have an example of that noise? Uh, you know, if I would have thought ahead, I would have. But now this is a scheme to get people to go back and listen to the first episode. Ah, got it. So, um, hook, line, and sinker, baby. Yeah, suckers. Um, it, it, it was device noise that I, I figured was our return audio coming back from our TRS channel. So, of course, I didn't pot it down. I didn't mute it. I left it wide open in case Nigel uh, was going to play back some, some, some video because he's controlling video on his side, uh, and the audio playback has to come back to the board. So um, I figured... That's where it was. Um, we had a bad cable. We had uh, there could have been anything going on, but it was sort of a strange, sort of garbledy. It was it was almost like power interference as well. I would say it, it was digital. It was di- it was a digital noise floor basically. Yeah, and it was annoying. And of course, as soon as I recorded the show and we all left, and uh, we didn't stream it that day, and so I I put it in there, and that was the first thing I heard, literally the first thing I heard. And uh, so of course we 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 go on this journey of, is it the cable? Nope, the cable's fine. Cable's great. Is it? <laughs> it, it so obviously, we think it's it's these it's the channel making noise or it's the computer making noise. We've got to figure out a way to get rid of it. So we 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 thought we found a solution. Yeah, we bought this box called the Stage Bug, which actually is working really well. But that wasn't the problem. Yeah, it, it made it <laughs> sort of better. Yeah, it yeah, did. But it did clean up that channel even more. But the real problem that was hap- was occurring that box could not it, it it couldn't fix nothing can really fix this problem so yeah. so after after chasing down uh channels and cables we decided okay it's, it's got to be power it's a dirty power so this <laughs> yeah, dirty power uh so we take the the power from the computer we plug it into a conditioner on, on, the, on the other side we take it off of the circuit it's still there mm. and it was almost it was going to be a show canceler i was going to not record today because it was driving <laughs> me nuts and, and i'm like dude come on yeah and i just like show must go on and i'm like i understand but come on man i mean it's it's got to sound better than that so um we, we initially uh thought it was going to be power turns out it wasn't well what, what was it nigel 
it was the sound card in the HDV computer. So the, it, basically, if you're any type of engineer, it doesn't matter if you're front of house or broadcast, computer sound can be a little bit tricky. So that's what it was. Yeah, so we'd, we'd found out. So we've got several stages of gain going through this thing. So we've got gain from the roadcaster. We've got gain from the sound card within the computer. And the one on the computer was just too high. Turns out if you turn it all the way up. Oh, it was, it was turned all the way up. It wasn't all the way up, but Pretty close. it was significantly up. Er. Uh, yeah. And so we, we had to do a little balancing act, of course, but it was device noise from, from the, the preamp or whatever you call them, the sound card. So, yeah, that, that, was, our, that was our little journey that we went down. Uh, I just love this music. It makes me feel like a fool. <laughs> it, it looked great, though. Oh, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> well, knowing is half the battle, so... Well, and this is just what our customers have to go through all day long, you know, and it's until there were solutions like this that came out. I mean, they you were literally splicing cable. You were taking three devices and, and hooking them all together to hopefully get some sort of result that you could, you know, put on the air or sell to people or whatever. I mean, it's just... And, and we have everything at our disposal, and we're chasing a stupid noise. I just thought it was absolutely hysterical. Actually, I kind of had an idea, but I didn't want... I, I usually don't come to conclusions that that quick, so... Nonsense. Because, you know, <laughs> computer audio just sucks. It doesn't matter. It, when you plug... When, audio coming from an interface to a computer, there's always something console-wise. There's always a buzz or yeah, something you have to chase. Laptops are horrible, too. It's true. So, I mean, this... It, this is a common problem, but it's a problem that you kind of have to take time and, uh, you know, chase down a little bit. And I, I wasn't aware that you're an air quoter. I'm an air quoter? Yeah, you, you air quoted. Well, that's because we're on camera, so oh. I always <laughs> quote. I just air. wasn't aware that I've known you for 15 years. I've never seen you air quote. Right. <laughs> well, when I get in front of a camera, I'm different. Okay. Um, <laughs> writing Nigel air quotes. Well, and, you know, so that's what went wrong. Um, I'm sure there's something else is going to go wrong and we'll have to address it in the next episode. Well, it did kind of because the headphone was like cutting out. I couldn't hear you earlier. That's That did go wrong earlier. but And, and, it, and it turned out it was just an adapter. Yeah, well, there's always something. Did you throw it away so I don't pick it up and use it later? It's gone. Okay, good. Because so. there's, there's always the guy like when you go to a gig or you're, you're there and the bad cable just goes right back in the bag, goes right back on the wall. <laughs> And it's the next show, and you're like, oh, I don't know what the problem was. No, oh, it's Ted's bad cable. Well, Jamie, um, I'm glad you're here because we've got a segment for you that I've been looking forward to all day, mm. uh, especially with this 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 audio issue. So let's nice. let's let, let's just get to it. What do you say, Nigel? I say we do it. It's about well, of course, as a senior sales guru for BSW. Oh. Jamie, drummer and recording engineer and general audio wizard. He's also an amateur brewmaster. Did you guys know that? <laughs> I wouldn't say brewmaster. <laughs> well, maybe he's a brew amateur. He's, he's a brew amateur. Brew amateur. I'll go with that. I hobnob during my uh, but, time off. But, you know, I'll say years ago, his homebrew was always the, the highlight of the BSW holiday season because you, you made a pumpkin beer. Mm. When was that? Was that like five years it's, ago? It was a few years ago, yeah. And that stuff was awesome. Toasted some real pumpkin, you know, and then I uh, I cut it up, put it in the uh, well, put it in the stuff. And I'll never forget it because you gave me a couple like twenty twos of it, and uh, I gave one to my brother in law, and uh, you you specifically said, "Don't drink the crap in the bottom of the bottle." <laughs> I didn't tell him that per se, and uh, we were hanging out, and I watched him slug it down like a tequila worm. Well, you know. It's so, like a tequila worm when it well, hits you. So what is that garbage at the bottom of the bottle, and why should you not drink it? Oh, it's just it's just leftover yeast. Um, obviously, you don't want to eat or drink live yeast because it will kind of upset your stomach uh, and give you uh, stomach issues. Yeah, Massive. stitches. Yeah, you know, stomach issues. I mean, we we can just we can we say explosive diarrhea because that's, that's that's what happened. <laughs> And that's worst case scenario. And uh, so he called me the next day, and he he asked what was in it. <laughs> pumpkins. <laughs> Maybe you're allergic to pumpkins, He'll never buddy. Eat pumpkin again. No uh, more squash. <laughs> well, it's it's weird. Yeah, he we don't hang out anymore. I wonder if that was it because oh, of it. That's uh, but no. So so Jamie, you you've brought us you brought us a, a favorite or what? What, what did but you? Yeah, bring you us? know, I brought. I tried this the other uh, week or so. 
It's from a local brewery, uh, Seven Seas Brewing. Uh, they're in Gig Harbor. However, they do have a uh, tap room here in Tacoma down the oh, street from we, us. Oh, we went there. Yeah, we did go there. We did go there. Yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah. now. We did go there. And it, uh, it's just conveniently on my way home, so it's easy just to stop by. Uh, today's beer of choice is Never Say Die. Uh, okay, and this is really odd because I just watched The Goonies literally two days ago with my daughter. It's and meant she- to be. Great. It's got a little pirate thingy and skull, crossbones. One is it one eyed Willie? It could be. We could we could say it is one eyed Willie. One eyed there's, Willie. There's yeah. people walking on the beach, so Well uh, so you know. so you're you're an IPA man. You are you an IPA man? Uh not really. I like a lot of pales and reds and yeah, browns. I'm a and pale guy stouts. too. Yeah. Well, uh, I like but, pale beer you know, too. IPA I'll do on a warm hot day. Right now it seems appropriate because it is kind of gazillion degrees out in yeah, Seattle, yeah. which never happens. And yeah, I would exactly. always think like it all depends on if you're eating or not. I guess. Oh, you can definitely pair it with any kind of food. I mean, I mean, beer pairs with food just like wine pairs with right, food. right. So I mean, the different styles of beer will pair with different types of food. Well, in traveling with Jamie um, for shows and 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 doing and doing things, he he definitely knows his beer and he catalogs them. Every single one we try anywhere, uh, and to some sort of database on his phone. It's it's a program called Untapped. Untapped. You can go to their uh, the app store and buy Untapped. So not you buy. get it's free. Untapped. Do you get points or no? It's just handshakes? basically your uh, you know you're logging your alcoholism. Oh, uh, essentially what it comes down to, and you get like little badges and little things like that, little surprises. achievements. Yeah, like what, achievement awards. That's yeah, what yeah. they say, yeah, like yeah, on yeah. the Ekbok. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, I, I'm done staring at it. So yeah, let's drink this. Thing. Okay, so all right, so let's get the glasses. Okay, you got gla- we got glasses back there. They look pretty dirty. I they've been up there for a long time, um, but it was either that or the ones that have the Target logo on them. That would have been cool. That would have been that funny. Would've been but would've been but I didn't want to pay them for using this. So Jamie's right. going to go ahead and hopefully pour these beers I'm gonna open directly. The first one. Here we go. Okay, yeah. that's good. good. The great thing with this is you want to make sure and pour the beer out of the can. And just let it let it really. Yeah, there's a way to do this, folks. Let it really get uh, get that yeah. head up there. Well, so and you, you know the trick, right? If you if you get too much, hear that? You want to get the the CO2 working. Is that what does that? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Little sir. Little bubbles. Cause see, right there, that's that's a third of that is is foam. No, it's all beer though. Obviously, but I thought the goal was to get maybe an inch on the top. It's you know just, this is just hey I'm just yeah you're the beer guy I'm just spitballing what I heard just, just get it flowing you don't have to do it you know too much is too much but too little is too right little. and then too too little is you, just you want a nice head and you want to just move the beer around yeah because I can it, see it I can moving. see it moving so is is it activating yeah you know it's helping the CO two move around look at that you can see the little bubbles mm-hmm. yeah I get it there oh, you go is that one mine okay yeah, I get it I'm man. trying to spill it on the electronics <laughs> and a little uh, kind of trivia thing is if you drink a beer out of a, a bottle or a can you're more likely to inhale more co2 so that's why people belch burp, more belch burp more see i knew you'd have some good stuff so see, i didn't know that either so yeah if you put it in a pint glass or you just take it out of the the bottle or can you will belch well what if you like burping well then just you know shotgun it okay which we could have done we could have well. and then that would have been worse because yes we would have been burping all right, all right well so before you drink it you want to smell it okay so yeah, that's a good. Just smell. Give it a good smell. What do you, what do you guys, what do you guys smell out of it? Um, smells like beer. Smell like uh, grapefruit. Oh, I smell um, that. Yeah, it's yeah. The, definitely it's a citrusy. Sort yeah, of yeah. Smell. which yeah. I like uh, out of a you know, and it's. I love it. Okay, so are we trying it? Did you already drink it without cheers? No, I didn't. Okay, I, I was gonna that. say because yeah. that's that's how you trip and fall. You got it. All right. Okay. So uh, salut. Cheers. Salut. Episode number two. Cheers to our special guest who I could see is drinking heavily right now. L'chaim. L'chaim. Very good. And. Oh, that's tasty. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That is good. It's got some bitterness to it, but it does have some citrusy, light taste to it. That's like a uh, complex, man. Yeah. Uh, the thing with hops is uh, most humans, you know, the way we're bred <laughs> is uh, oh, geez. anything bitter we don't like. It's poison. So in, in the, uh, you know, when we forage, if we have something that's bitter, it's usually something bad. Correct. Um, so... It takes a while to get used to this. So, like, when you see young kids drinking, or kids of 
21. Obviously. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah see, I mean, it's, air it's definitely not. Yeah, he air quoted. Air what? quoted. <laughs> it's not just. The it's, freaking it's, cameras make you air quote. A, it's kind of a weird thing, yeah. Well, you know, and, and, and why, I, I'm, I'm sure I know this, but why, why is it an IP? What is India Pale Ale? Or? India Pale Ale uh, originated back in the England times. I don't know exactly what century or what year, but when they were going from England over to India, they would, all their beer would always spoil. So mm. they would, they found a way to put in hops as kind of a preservative, preservative, and uh, it would add flavor to it that we know today as, you know, the hop flavor, you know, oh, very look bitter. That. We're looking, and we're looking it would, at it. Uh, it would keep longer. So hence IPA, India, pale ale. Right. Okay. So that makes sense, right? Yeah, it does. Totally. But in, and when it does that, it makes it more alcohol e, right? Correct? No, no, it doesn't. It's just it, flavor. It's just flavor. Yeah. So that has nothing to do. Nothing to do with the alcohol, the ABV. ABV. Alcohol yeah. by volume. There you go. See? Yeah. You got and it. that's one thing about that retail place we worked at. It was acronym city. <laughs> Didn't even matter what the acronym was. It was just like ABC. ABC. Always be close. Ape. Baby. Did you ever do ape? Never did it. Approach, position, engage. No, nope. it was way before my or after oh. my time. What? You don't remember ape? I'm. I kind of have a, a a memory, a slight memory of it, but I didn't. I can't remember. Well, it was at it this was place. You would see a customer perusing merchandise, and you would approach. You know, gotcha. Like it, it's it's see now say, saying it back it's, uh, it seems like we're about to kill a gazelle. Well, it also sounds like um, it could be kind of not appropriate, I right? This, this and now, now you position yourself near the customer so you can be like, "Are those boots snakeskin?" Yes. And then he's like, "Yeah." And then you've engaged, and then you can talk to the customer. If I can get you this in red, will you buy it today? Do you know what kind of clothes that's called, Jamie? <laughs> Soft. Clothes? Well, that's that's that is kind of a soft close. I don't remember. It's been over fifteen years. I want to yeah. say that's a trial close. Is it? Yeah. I, I mean, if you okay, you're kind it, of testing the waters. It, if I can, would you? Yeah, I guess so. We can't go down this road right no. now. Why, no. why are we? Why are we? We doing need that? to. We'll, we'll do that in a later episode with Jack Ewer. <laughs> yeah. For our our friend from Sennheiser. Well, plus I worked in the warehouse, so I have no clue. What oh exactly yeah, you guys were drawing pictures on the walls. Yeah, lucky. Yeah. And eating all the candy out of the shipments. Absolutely. Well, uh, now that we've got a beer in hand, I, I think you know we've been talking about this this super secret guest, uh, which we didn't mention. But you know, I'm I'm real happy to have him on today. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about our guest here. And today's guest for the BSW TV podcast episode two is special. Not only is he a star of BSW's video marketing, but he's an accomplished radio personality and voiceover actor heard the world over. Let us welcome. Mr. Mike West. There he is. Look at that smile. Aww. You know, I, I, I just tuned in. The first thing I heard was pooping pumpkins. Yeah, sorry. What what kind of podcast are we doing here? Uh, you know, we're still trying to figure it out. What? what, what, did, what? Like, well, like in college, we're what? trying to figure it out. Yeah, we're trying to figure it out. I mean, we, we, we talked. What, what, what was that in reference to? Oh, <laughs> sorry. That, oh, we were talking. Well, we were talking. We're, we missed the beer segment. Uh, where we're oh. talking about IPA and uh, the the story of, of Jamie uh, bringing a beer on uh, that had yeast in it, and I, I let my brother in law <laughs> drink it without telling him not to drink it. Okay, that's the poop okay. portion. All right, I so, thought I was in some. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. 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 Mike West, uh, you know he, he's a voice to be reckoned with if you can't tell. Uh, with several decades of radio experience <laughs> working with uh, PBS, AT and T, Microsoft, Time Warner, and uh, oh, who's that guy? That's Paul McCartney. Oh my! Oh, from the Rolling Stones. Oh, <laughs> Whoa! Man. You mean that's the that's the replacement Palmer? The replacement Palmer. Oh my gosh! Yeah, because Paul's dead. Well, Is that right? We'll get we'll get into that later. It's in the album. He's also worked with Time Warner Cable Sports, Disney, Nintendo, the biggest of them all. Welcome, <laughs> Mr. Well, Mark. Yeah. You're talking about me. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's you. You're, you're that guy from all the videos. I, oh yeah. Well, thank. You. Yes. I, well, I love I love working with you guys. I mean, seriously, it's like a. I live I live way far away from BSW headquarters, but uh, when I finally arrive and have to screw with all the traffic, I, I always just have a blast with you guys. So yeah, and thanks it, for having me. Yeah, and it's <laughs> flight, <laughs> flights oh, a we'll lot. Get we'll get to that. Oh, Currently I, residing in the where are they now yeah, file. I, 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 kind of sounds like I'm pooping pumpkins, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I mean, that's called a. Is that a callback? What do they call that in uh, comedy? Callback. 
Oh, yes, that's yeah, a callback. Callback, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll be doing a lot of those this oh, afternoon. Thank oh, thank God. No. Well, you know, and and, and Vinny, yeah, Vinny, uh, Mike West, we we brought him on. Um, Vinny's my nickname. You yeah, see. That, yeah. I'm just trying to. You know what? Stand it's up. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's my beer? You know, where's the technology for that? It's uh, <laughs> that's in the next Roadcaster Pro update. I hope so. It's coming. So you know, you, you, you we go back a ways. Um, you know, yeah. we. You know, as I understand, you were in radio. I, I was listening to you as a kid, and I didn't even know it was you. Oh, I didn't... so you probably would listen with your mom and dad in the car or something. Yeah, right? yeah, because we we had when we moved here. You know, you were you were on uh, uh, with you know, your your show Crow and West. Yeah, uh, ninety nine point nine KISW out here in, in Seattle. So yes, why don't you why don't you give us a little background on on you? How did you get into radio and voiceover and and like how how you know why did you do that? Well, it all started with a, <laughs> with an IPA. <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> little pumpkins, very mm -hmm. little pumpkins. You have to start small. Uh, let's see. Well, um, if you really want to get into this, Which uh, we do. I'll tell you. Number one, I am like, I'm sure we've talked about this, but I am so dyslexic, and I'm not just using that word lightly. I I really am. I didn't even know what it was when I was a kid. So anyway, the only thing I used to do <laughs> was. Uh, play with my little reel-to-reel -reel tape deck we, you know an analog tape deck that we happened to have in the house and i was the only one messing around with that thing and it was just like the the because i couldn't read very well so i would just make stuff up and do stupid noises and sound effects and things like that well and then high school comes around and what the hell there's a radio station upstairs on the second floor of nathan l high school uh c89.5 knhc which uh, still exists and i still go there and tell kids not to get into radio <laughs> so that that's uh that's i got my start in high school and so many people that i worked with um started there and uh like one guy was running mtv another guy have you ever heard uh, bill nye the science guy show oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay so uh jim mckenna also part of the radio program he he executive produced that show and so a lot of really cool people came out of that program. It kind of was a lifesaver for me because it just gave me some sort of purpose because I don't I, I didn't know what else I could do with my lack of uh, uh, reading skills and uh, like numbers would all be backwards and stuff. Yeah. So I thought, oh, I'll go into radio and I'll be in this little room all by myself and make stupid noises and stuff. And so uh, day after high school, I got a job in Ocean Shores, Washington, a tiny station, did everything. You know, it's your typical old school radio deal. I got, I left there, came back to Seattle, worked for an all black radio station. I was the only white guy there. Great. It was just really a great learning place for me uh, for a number of reasons. Were, <laughs> and, and you were uh, on air there? Or was yeah, I was, uh, I was, uh, I worked, they had an FM that played jazz and I just, uh, boy, I learned a lot about jazz. Oh it yeah. It was great, great education. And then that, they had an AM station. I ended up being news director there. I think I was 19 years old, something like that. And uh, uh, I got fired from there. Mm. Yay! See, someone else got fired. Oh, See that, Nigel? That's normal for people to get fired. If radio people don't get fired, well, something's very uh, wrong. Yeah. I mean, that, that, when everyone says, I've been in radio and I've been stuck here for two years. So that's, <laughs> like, that's a normal thing then, to get fired Oh, radio. yes, yes. Yeah. It's a badge of honor. Yeah, yeah. correct, yeah. <laughs> uh, from there, I decided I was going to try community college and in the midst of that some I used to listen to this cool guy on the radio who's now in San Francisco and I called him up one day and I said hey I really think you're really super on the radio <laughs> and he said well yeah thanks a lot by the way I'm going to this new station that's uh, kind of switching to rock called KISW and they're looking for interns so I got it I got my foot in the door there and then the next thing I know I'm doing mornings there with with a uh, with another dude Went to Los Angeles, came back to Seattle, spent my rest of my career in Seattle. And uh, I haven't been on the radio full time for probably 12 years. Uh. Um, the last big radio thing I did, at least for me, I did a Beatles show on uh, a classic rock station here for 10 years. And I also did a syndicated show for uh, Dial Global, which is now Westwood, Westwood One. Yeah, and actually, on. you let us hang out with you on, uh, in uh, when you were at. Yeah, uh, you guys came KZOK. to the station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people would assume that you know you you uh, record the show, but I really liked going in every Sunday. Just 
like you're smelling that beer. It's the smell of a radio station. There's nothing like it. It's like it's beer, coffee, old Jim cigarettes, Sox. smoke. Just, yeah, grandma, yeah, grandma's I mean, house. Everything. And other stuff. Yeah, and other, yeah. <laughs> menthol, yeah. like grandma said. So, yeah, menthol. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. So, but that ended. I got fired. No. <laughs> Well, par for the course, and, and you know it's 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 funny because when when I came to BSW, you know uh, Tim uh, uh, is our CEO, and we had talked about you know this video thing, you know, and it's you know let's, let's start making product videos, and he said, hey, you know, you, you know anything about video? I said, sure, don't, and he said, good, you can you can go ahead and build a studio. So uh, huh. we, we started kind of throwing things together, and I said, you know what, I'm I'm not this guy, you know, we we need someone who's been in the industry, we need someone who who's who's got a voice and, and can do this. And, and Tim goes, I know a guy. So bada beam, bada boom. Does Tim go, sound like that? He does. Not. But he wasn't available. So yeah. So we, we, you know, <laughs> sent a memo out and we, we, we got, we got Mike. I West. think Tim saw, cause I used to, uh, uh, I used to review autos. I was an auto reviewer for oh, that's CBS. It. And uh, I used to, uh, instead of doing like, you know, talking about cylinders and stuff, I would just review a car like somebody, who just bought it and was trying to figure all the crap out. And uh, they were, I guess, semi-humorous. And so t I, I think Tim saw a couple of those and said, eh, we should try to do something kind of like that. Yeah, it was, it was it, try and keep it loose. I mean, in our industry for, for radio who, you know, it's, it's, it's notoriously serious, you know, and we're yeah. kind of, you know, we're serious too, but you know, we're, we're drinking beer on a podcast. So yeah, you gotta have your fun every now and then. Yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> cool. No one's ever done that. Um, but so we, you know, we, you know, Tim said, Hey, let's go, let's go have, you know, dinner with this guy. And, you know, I want you to meet him. And, you know, he, he's a guy, he was on, on KISW and I was like, Oh, I think I, I heard him. And then that super beta prostate commercial. Um, <laughs> so no, that's the only commercial you heard of him. Uh, no, My well, prostate <laughs> is giving me fits. Yeah. Said Joe Theismann. <laughs> that's the, that's the pinnacle of my career. Yeah. Well, it was, it was funny. Beta prostate commercial. Well, and we, we, we met up, I think we went, did we go to the Met? Where do we have dinner? Yeah. It was the Met. Yeah. We went we did go in downtown and, and so we, we started talking and of course I started having martinis or whatever stupid stuff I was drinking. And, and then we started connecting the dots about Nessa. Well, what have you done? And you know, what could you possibly have done? And, <laughs> and so we, I, we made this, this connection over a video game I played as a kid, uh, called oh, yes. yeah, Star Fox. Nigel, you got something for me there? Oh yeah. Star Fox. So Star Fox is a game that came out on Nintendo 64 and it was kind of a revolutionary, <sighs> Uh, video game and uh, you know of unbeknownst course, to me I didn't know well it was the you know it was 97 dude and so it, <laughs> and uh, you know it, it, it didn't connect with me until you started you did one or two voices and I just absolutely went through the roof oh. uh, I was like I've listened to your voice for five years trying to play that stupid game oh that's cool yeah so yeah. you're you know and and of course so you know I, this the show wouldn't be complete with without some examples of course I'll do my best Andros oh. won't have his way with me that's you. That was that's yeah. totally you. It'll be wow. a piece of cake, General. I mean, Ooh. that's yeah. So I'm sitting here going, "That's the guy from the game," and I had to get, I had to take off and call my brother and tell him about it, and you know. So I said, "No, he's hired. He's Funny. star. If he's Star Fox, he's Fox oh. McCloud. He's freaking hired. He's he's in." Um, that's all it takes, huh? And so yeah, apparently you got to you know yeah. just just be in a Nintendo game to win me over. <laughs> So then we started, you know, our, our YouTube channel, and we started making the, these product videos. And, you know, v Vinny had uh, Vinny, uh, Mike West. I keep calling him by his nickname. This is like the second time I've done it. Um, he, no worries. You know, he 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 came in with some really really cool ideas. I mean, we we did Mike shootouts. And remember our first episode? I think I pulled the episode because it was we did it in front of a white sheet. Remember that? Yeah. And I didn't have a teleprompter, and so it was like. Oh. Yeah, so we were kind of looking around, trying to figure out how we were going to do it, and it was just, it was classic. I might bring it back on the next episode just for fun. A little, a little oh, thanks. Yeah, just to see where we came oh, from. Oh, that's the, that'll be the what's went wrong segment. <laughs> there you, there go. you go. And that's how we, that's how we write it. Your white sheet's not ironed. No, it absolutely. <laughs> well, we tried. We got, you know, so, because, you know, Tim, we'd set it up, and he came, remember he had that Stanley steamer? Or whatever it was, and he's sitting there trying to steam the, the 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 folds out of it, and I was like, "It's it's a fail. We're just gonna video it. We can't make it too polished, you know." And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and well, we could, but oh jeez. 
But you know, so we we've done several you know, hundred videos, and you know, we've 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 collected hundreds of thousands of views online. And but, do you have a video? Do you remember uh, that's your favorite that we did? I I've got my favorites, but I want to see what what you what you think. Was. Me? Uh, well, I should say that you're you're the whack master. You come up with these bizarre ideas. You're you're a movie buff. So there was one we did a maybe it was Caddyshack. I think. Yeah, we yeah, we did Caddyshack that. twice. That was pretty cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the hole. I, I, that, it's in the hole. That, yeah. <laughs> I would say that's one of my faves. I think we did yeah. we, we did a shot for shot remake uh, of of Ty Webb terrorizing that little kid with the pitchfork. But then uh Monty, and then Monty Python is another Oh that's right that, that was one of my favorites Holy Grail. when we did when we for the pod mic for the road pod mic we did a uh, uh That's a lot of edi- editing dude Oh I know and I as I'm writing these things down and you know uh, Nigel's office is right next to mine and as, as I come out and go I've got this great idea we're going to do these like you idiot you realize how hard that's going to be and I said yeah but I don't have to edit it <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep a consideration to the guy who's editing mm-hmm. Here's what we'll do. You know. We'll go to we'll go to Mount Rainier. See, <laughs> hey, I'm up for that. I know you are, and we'll 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 bring beers. See, and we'll now. <laughs> you know what'd be kind of cool is if you uh, put it out there for our clients. Hey, what kind of video do you want to see? You know, I've done that, and really? I have, and we've done some of them. I did not know that. Yeah, I guess I just don't watch enough videos. No, we did some, but then you know we get the other ones that are like you know jump off a building or you know. Uh, Please Th- yeah. throw a mic, throw a microphone at, at that one guy or whatever. Well, but you know, Mike, we, we always get, we still get calls. Do you actually have a physical office or phone line at BSW? Cause everybody thinks you do. Oh, Pe- no. people keep calling for you. You're, 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 who would not allow that? You're a well, smart company. <laughs> well, I, I try and do my, my, my best uh, Mike West voice and I'm found out immediately. We should set oh. him up with a phone and then just have it on, on. Auto. Oh, answer. just like a voice. Yeah, just like, just a, like a voice over. Hey, you reach Mike West. He goes, blah, Hi. Blah, blah. You know, it's funny. We talked. That's great. We actually <laughs> talked about doing that. Yeah. And Tim was serious. He's like, We should really just take one of these, just set him up a voicemail. Why did we not do that? I, yeah. I think it just never, we just never did it. I think it's time to uh, initiate that. Yeah. Oh, did, Jamie, do you need to open another beer? I do. Oh, well. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. Okay. This one's for you, yeah. buddy. Okay, you got to pour it. Don't screw it up. Uh, uh. Have you ever seen Have you ever seen the uh, old Ed Sullivan show replays? I can't. I think it runs on. There's a cable channel called Decades. Oh, I, mean, I know that. Yeah, I haven't seen. Okay, well, this is just. If you ever get a chance to watch, every time they have the like Ed Sullivan would do, jug, they'd have jugglers on or people walking tight rope, tight ropes or whatever weird crap. Besides, you know, having the Rolling Stones on there. They always would play music like it was like the same music for anyone who had one of those acts. Yeah. <laughs> and that music sounds it's just like the silly just, just like that. You know, and it's yeah. it's kind of fun for this podcast, like sitting around trying to find the right music beds for this stuff <laughs> has just been a blast. It's uh, awesome. I bet yeah. it'd be hard. It, it is hard. There's so much good stuff out there. Oh god! Well, it's like you know, is it going to portray the specific mood? Is is it, uh, you, you know, the sound quality's got to be there because there's a lot of not really great ones out there. Yeah. I just had to hire somebody to play it. I hired your son Jamie to come play trumpet. He would play that trumpet. Yeah, he could. He's a mom. And then I he played oboe and clarinet apparently. He's great. So <laughs> I love how you can hear the 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 wind and the reed. Right, you can. I yeah, mean, that's a great so recording, good. you know. And it's it's it ain't some guy at a MIDI controller going nah. an M one D one controller. What nerds are we? Am I die? Probably use an RE twenty. <laughs> an RE twenty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so sponsored by EV. You know, and th- it, we would be. You know, I would regret it deeply if we didn't. You know, play some of, play some of uh, Mike West highlights because we. You know, of course, while what one? Oh uh, well, oh. you found one. I found several. Oh, did I? And that'll lead us in into our next segment. But I'm, I'm going to play my favorite one, uh, just because I burst out laughing, and I would I would hire you in two seconds after hearing this. So so. You oh know, boy. Let me make sure I'm on the right page here before I start playing this thing. What did What are you going to do to me? Is Mike West. My most recent movie trailer voiceover job was for Tron 3D. Tron 3D. This movie is not yet rated. I also do this type of work for PBS, Microsoft, and many more. My name is Mike West. Right here. And uh, I'd like to work for you. I'd like to work 
<laughs> Where the hell did you find hired? That? I don't even remember. Like uh, you're you're kind of all over the internet. That was a that was like I think I just recorded that for some somebody just asked me to do that just well, for fun. Yeah, because I'll tell you, I mean, that's weird. I pulled that up and it just about blew my speaker. You went, and you did that low thing, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, I had to turn it down, man. I mean, that, that's some serious power. But I mean, you've you, you've done some really really cool stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, like this is a good one too. I'm pretty sure my kid heard this one. Now you can bring home Phineas and Ferb Mission Marvel on Disney DVD oh. with six yep. bonus adventures, a collectible comic book, an exclusive poster, and a new mysterious hero. Stop him! Phineas and Ferb Mission Marvel today <laughs> yeah. only on Disney DVD, rated TVG. You know what the funny thing is? Uh, I heard, I remember that as a kid. Yeah. See, I told you. Yeah. There's, and there's all these things he's yeah. done, and then I go, and it's, and I'm just now putting it. Together that was that, you. That's yeah. him. Well, what's scary is I remember that as an adult. Well, you, weird. You, you young kids. I wasn't gonna bring that up. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, but I guess we could do yeah. that. But you know, there, there's one thing we've been talking about. We, we started talking about a podcast movement while we were there. And, uh, you know, there's so many people that are guilty of this, including you, Mike West. And I'm going to call you out here in a second. Um, this this term Uh-oh. this term called radio puking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and so I've, I've got a little clip here. Let's let's see if I can get to it here. It's a world of radio. If you have additional questions and would like to speak with an investment specialist now, yes. press the- Live in concert from Blockbuster Video. Imagine a 12. I don't think that's puking. Volkswagen Beetle. I will. The other one was kind of. It's coming. Or in high explosive VP racing gas. Cap it quick. Climb in the driver's seat. It's VW from top to bottom of drag racing featuring the California Frozen End shootout. That's puking. That's awesome. So ah, you can yeah. buy the you can buy the whole seat, but you're only going to use the edge. Yeah. And so I, I need to ask you, since you're an industry professional and I'm, I'm an industry hack. What where, what is radio puking? Uh, we just heard it, but w- what would you call it? Uh, it's what it's it started when I when I used to listen way back, and I it may have even started in the fifties. I don't know, but it's uh, it's when disc jockeys used to talk kind of in the back of their throats, and it's like if you were drinking a really bad beer, oh, and right before you're gonna throw up that, it, that oh yeah, it's yep. right there, and you're gonna. So it's like, hey, I can do it. What's going on? <laughs> so it's not, it's not like, you know, like real puking. No, but okay. it's, it is the same, similar action of well, puking. Yeah. And, 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 it's and, dry, dry heaving. Dry, okay, yes, it's, it's, oh, it's radio dry heaving. Yeah, there, yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, we're going to coin that. But, yeah. you know, Jamie brought up a good example when we were kind of talking. Uh, and, and, and so th- this, I think this is one of the best examples of, of puking I've heard on radio. We'll play that for you now here. Ah, uh, yes, does the very man himself, Madman Mancuso, on the way to breaking the world's record, playing one single solitary song for who knows how long. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's puking. <laughs> Mad 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 that? That's the Buddy Holly story. That's Madman Macuso. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, and and so he yeah. and he just absolutely just so just, it is fifties. Oh God, and that's just and I absolutely I don't know why, but I love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. Okay. And it, it. I don't know. I don't know why that was so cool back in the day. We was, used to mock it later on. I mean, we, we used to. There was a. There's a. <laughs> I, this podcast. This plays. This plays everywhere. But there was a. Well, I'll just say there was a team. Uh, they were Kent and Allen, just super oh, guys. Shit. They came from Portland, worked in Seattle. Oh, Kent and Allen. Yep. And um, we used to always mock them. We used to do like a, a parody of their show on our show. And, uh, oh, they got pissed. But, oh, I, yeah, I understand. I mean, they, they still kind of do the, the TV thing. Um, I think one of them does uh, a yeah, TV, yeah, like, Kent, a, like a yeah. one of the local TV shows. Kent. Yeah. Yes. Great. They uh, Alan just retired, and then I think Kent moved to afternoon. So anyway, that's a Seattle thing. But fired or retired? Um, mm, he re- actually, I think he got out before they got. Oh, him, good. Oh, it'd be is, better if he, he was fired. It, it's it, it, more it, that rarely happens because radio people. It's like I don't know. Maybe it's kind of a show business thing. Although I don't think of radio as show business all the time. But I think people just don't know when to get out. Fair enough. And they they milk it until somebody goes. Yeah, you, know. you got you to gotta stop. Your radio puking is killing me. Yeah. We're going in another direction. No, <laughs> right. Yeah, another good example is um, on Stand By Me, there's a, uh, a disc jockey that does, you know, 
you know, top of the wax, blah, blah, blah. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, he does that kind of stuff. And well, it's the same. It's, it's, it's during the 50s. Raised on records and blow to rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, and I, I, you know, I, I want to bring back radio puking into podcast. I really do. I think it's got its place. <laughs> yeah. I think it does. I don't know where, but I, 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 I want to do it. You know, I, hate to, cause... I hate to say it. I hear it every day, though. One of my coworkers well, uh, likes to radio puke. But, and was he a form, the... Is he a former disc jockey? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, well, and we'll have him on on another episode coming up, and so we'll maybe we'll, you should do he, that. We are going to be doing the radio puking yeah. segment, and he is going to kill us. Oh, oh absolutely! I'm excited, and I can't wait for it. It's going to be good. He, he's, Does he talk like that all the time? Yes, yes. he yes. has it's no scary. off switch. So, no, yeah, it's it's on. He, hey, honey, what's for dinner? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's what we call a prototype. I like a cheeseburger uh, and double fry. Yeah, never intended for mass production. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, you know, so that, so that brings us to, you know, I thought we would do this little thing where we, uh, you know, I think we should all do our best sort of radio puking impression. I think we've been kind of doing it. Haven't we been We've doing been trying that? it, but now we're going to officially do it now. And I, I hit the wrong button, so we're going to just rock this song right here. That's but so I've, I've got some music beds here. <laughs> so on each of us, uh, I'm going to indiscriminately give you a music bed, and you've got a, the other term here, hit the post. Yeah. You, can you explain what that is to the to the oh the well casters? The, you, you talk up there's a, like uh, in fact a lot of records a lot of 45s that were um, produced used to have like a talk up time or there was a clock in the studio that had mm-hmm. a talk up so it's right before, it's you talk up to the from the instrumental when the first singing starts so you're that's the post, you know. Yep. So you're, you're when the singing starts, you don't want to be talking over the singing because that sounds really dorky. Right. Exactly. So when I was younger, so, when I had my cassette player like ready to tape that one song, I'd always get the freaking the guy, the guy <laughs> talking over it, and then you yeah, the, and, that's high, and then they start singing, and then it's yeah. clean. Well, it was uh, that was that was fun. That was a lot of fun to do. It's a lost art. It, you know what? And we're we're gonna bring it back right now. Oh, we got a timer we're, somewhere? we got yeah no 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 we got a timer, but I got I got music and. Dang it. It took me a long time to find these, so we're going to radio puke over them. So, Vinny, I'm going to have you go first and just show us how it's done. Well, what's the song? Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, this this is off. This is winging it. I got nothing written down. We're all going to hit it. Are you ready? I guess. Okay, here we go. 75 degrees, downtown Seattle. 72 in Tacoma, home of BSWUSA.com. I can't hear the music. It's not loud enough for my headphones. Who the hell's the engineer in this place? Good afternoon. <laughs> Still going on. I don't know. I can't hear anything. Yeah, it's I going. I can't hear a goddamn thing. <laughs> Are they singing? Are they singing? Are they not singing? No, no. I don't know. I can't hear it. That's like pretty I good. Like I said, 77 in Seattle. 70... <laughs> no, it got... Can you not hear that? <laughs> well, I... I... You're, you're, uh, you're hitting the post on an alternative uh, music channel. You did. I, it was playing. You did good. But That's th- a very they, long intro, though. But is there singing? No, there actually, it's just music beds. I just, you gotta have, you gotta have this. I know. I was just, I was just gonna <laughs> wait until you ran out of breath. <laughs> oh, I see. Thanks. <laughs> but I don't what know. Went if, wrong part two. Yeah. Okay. I'm writing that down. All right. Uh, now, I was pooping pumpkins. Doing that. <laughs> pooping all right, J- all right, Jamie, you're up. That's um, good, Manny. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you. You ready? Yeah. Might okay. As well. Here we go. This Saturday night, check out Pu- Puking Pumpkins down at the Crocodile Cafe. Mm. One time only, sold out. Mm, sorry. Try the other door. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I don't know. I could have been more throaty. You wanna do You're it good, e- kid. You want to do it again? No. You got a future. <laughs> it hurts. Uh, <laughs> mm. All right, Nigel, I'm going to throw you a curveball. Oh, good. Uh, th- this is a station... I don't. No, I think you'll do fine. Here we go. That is a good one. You better hit that. You better hit it. Vocal's gonna start any minute. All right. Ninety-nine point six. The country. I'm not the a country. puker, but I'm gonna try anyway. We got Dirk Bentley coming into town. <laughs> Talking about good country music on ninety-nine point six. The ha ha ha. Not bad. Oh, wow. That was pretty good. I like that. The country. A radio station called The, the Country. country. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a niche radio station what? right there. 
I'm a brother, you know. I, I was we, I was waiting for you to say, can I get an amen? <laughs> yeah. Can, oh, I should have pulled. Now yeah, what? Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah, and did you just station. and did it change yeah. to the hawk midway through? Yeah, the <laughs> hawk. <laughs> Boy, that's, I think I said like the hawk. Typical hawk. radio. I was going to format change in the middle yeah. of the broadcast Sorry, we're going here. Going in a different direction on the talk up. Oh, that's so good. Oh, well, man. I think I think uh, do I have to do one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course you do. <sighs> okay. Well, there's only one left, so I guess I'll do this one. Coming at you here at BSWUSA.com. We are ready to rock here at the BSW Podcast Episode 2. I have not been practicing all week in front of a mirror. I have been doing this in my office with the lights off and coming at you. <laughs> not I'm going to have to say that's the, that's the best one right there. You, know, you had a little valley girl in there for a second, which was <laughs> Jeez, you nice know, touch. Oh, my God. Was there a valley girl in there? I'll do yeah. it. I'll do it in the listen. The listen. Gag me with a spoon. The listen back. <laughs> Gag me with a spoon. Well, you know, that's that's just a... Uh... Dynamite drop in, money. Okay. Well, I th- I, have we covered everything that we need to cover here? Oh, way, way more. Have we Have we done it? Did, did Way we, more than you should have covered. Well, we probably hit him with the hind a little bit, but that's okay because I think the, the the radio the radio puking was great. And Vinny, thanks for uh, Mike West. Jeez, I'm just going to delete this. I have another one. Yeah. Don't you know my name? I do. It's on the screen, but you know, it's you know. Yeah, it's right there. See, Mike West, voiceover talent. Do we say well, Bob? Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Bob, Bob. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, you know. I'll do my best. And I'm trying. Let's rock and roll, boys. Let's rock and roll, boys. Well, thanks, uh, Mr. West. I, I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, I'll probably see you in a week or two, and we'll shoot some more goofy video stuff. Okay. I don't know what we just did, but it was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah it, was it was kind of fun. fun. It was it was loose, and uh, we, we, you know, we had beer. And that's, mm. That was what I was happy yeah, about. Yeah, you had beer. Well, yeah. uh, I, no, thought well I, I thought I saw you drinking, but it may have just been water. But next time you're in studio, well, Mike, yeah. I mean, we can do it again. Yeah, uh, we'll have okay. you. We'll have you live in studio next. We, we'll get you from the Great White North, and we'll get you down here in Tacoma. Neat. All right. Tacoma. Good, good podcast, fellas. Thank you, and I will uh, talk to you soon, man. Bye, okay. Bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Oh, come on in. Come on. Yeah, oh, come my, on. My wife just came in Uh-oh. to the studio, and my dog. Here, hold on a second. Come here, oh, Lucy. Right. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Hardly working. Oh, this my. is Lucy. Oh. oh. Hello, Lucy. Poppers. <laughs> That's my wife. Hi, hi, hi wife. Um, I got the cameras over here. I'm waving at the oh, screen because I'm looking at the output, but he's actually there. Okay. Hey, come here, Cross. Makes sense. This is my. This is the grandson. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, hey, how's how it you going? doing? You're you're live say, on the air. Say howdy do. Howdy do. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good for you, buddy. There's a little check for him. Yep. Little on air. Little, on camera. Little residge. Okay. I'm into that. See you guys. Hey, see you, man. Thank see you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, that was fun, huh, guys? Yeah. I yes, mean, it was. Well, you know, I think we've kind of hit everything. And, you know, make sure you follow us on uh, all of our little social media there, YouTube. You can subscribe to the channel. Just look us up, BSW USA Video. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn at BSW USA. Make sure you visit the website to check out all this cool stuff that we actually sell and, you know, rep and at BSWUSA.com. And if you have not gotten it yet... The new flyers come out. There it is. You know, there we do. We, we were one of the last to do print. We do catalogs. We do flyers. We do exclusive deals. Um, so log on to the, the website, BSW USA, and you can subscribe. You know, give us a... Hey, does anybody else do flyers? No. Who else does flyers than BSW? Uh, and what we do, nobody. Hmm. Exactly. No, there's nobody. Well, that's because people think flyers are old school, and we are like, no, they're not. I'm still I'm flipping through it here. No, no, no. I get a catalog at home with stuff, and like I'm all over it. Yeah, well, I still it. I still flip through it, but you know, like, you know, and plus in here that you know, there's there's deals and there's stuff that you that, that you can't get online because of the the police, uh, the price whoop, police whoop. getting on there. Whoop, whoop. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't have any of those queued up. Oh, next and, time, next time. Well, yeah, and see now it's I can't do it because too many freaking layers. Well, it's true, but you know, good going road. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. So so get on get on the print train. Uh, also check us out and subscribe to the podcast email catalog. You know, do it all, or you can give us a call too. We're always here. Uh, don't ask for me though. Ask for Jamie. Yeah. What's yep. your uh, What's your email, Jamie? It's going to be J A M I E S like Seattle at BSW 
USA.com. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for your puking. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. It was. I like Mike West, and I like doing this, and uh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, you know, times. it's you know, it's an experiment. It's to see where it goes, and you know, like I said, how do we fix it next time? Oh, we have a lot of stuff to Ideas. fix. Ideas. Yeah. Lord. Okay. Well, Nigel, I think that's it. All right. And here, okay, come the credits. Bye bye. <laughs>